fame and fortune is just one aspect, you know, but life is a bigger aspect than them all. Life govern it, you know. And the basic principles that I use to govern my life is I ask the Lord to help me to behave myself wisely. Fame and fortune is just one aspect, you know, but life is a bigger aspect than them all. Life govern it, you know. And the basic principles that I use to govern my life is I ask the Lord to help me to behave myself wisely. All right. We're back and set. Ready and goody goody. Ready to tell a story. I am a storyteller. I love to tell you stories. Stories to inspire you. Stories to keep you going. I tell a story. I tell your story. I tell your story. It doesn't matter the story. Once the story is relevant, relevant enough, we jack it out and bust it. But have you taken some time to explore the internet? That's what I do. I love to double to play with the internet. Most of this research, most of the stories I bring to you, I sto- our stories I dig deep into the internet. Compare, contrast. I don't read from one source to come and talk to you about now, nah, man. You would have been calling me a liar by now. But the reason you trust my stories is because I contrast. I read from sources here and here and here. Put them together. Sieve them up. And make sure I bring you the authentic one. Mostly the ones that reflect everywhere I read. So sometimes the story is short. Even though it is long on, you know, various sites, I make it short because if the inconsistencies are too many and I can't authenticate, I let them go. I don't come sit here and run you by inconsistencies. If I want to do so, then I'm ready to actually deal with the controversies that come with that. But today's story is going to be brief, one of the brief, one of the short stories. I don't want to say the shortest, I've done shorter stories. But this quite short. But when light you make you understand the zongos. We live with them now. We are with them now. You can't do without the zongo. Even the politrician can't do without the zongo. Even the politrician can't do without the zongo. Trust me, I them can't do without we. Are we them one use all the time? Check it, are we them one use? Time for election, them one use we. The main reason why Dr. Baumia was actually convinced into politics, the man is a diplomat, I keep telling you, this is a very, very good diplomat. Not a good politician, but a very good diplomat. But because he appeals better to the Zongus, he was convinced and dragged into the political business. That should tell you how important the Zongos are even to our political fiber, our body politics. Development Zongo, Yejuma Deni in Ayene, Upe Security Man, Papa Pao, Besha, or Noma Swamau, Nukre Diedim, Shisha Zongo Niba. Oh, yeah, man, yes, I. Sometimes it's a shame that anytime you talk about jobs for the Zongos, they mention security. It's a shame sometimes. That is not the only job the Zongo person can do. But because of honesty, you know, credit, you know, they love to entrust the security jobs. Because a ban no credit party. Zongo ni on for dabi 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 dabi. We are not talking about the, 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 the criminal though. We are not talking about those with social vices. One now what you should be now dabi. And on your zongo su and in a bind. And we are to try soon in a bind. But yeah, because some of the young Zongo, you decide to go that lane, so they behave in a way they say it's a Zongo. But the true Zongo person is mostly recommended for security jobs because of the honesty. On for our father, acquired the or Bashir Swam, my dear Chino Abeto, like a crowd of money, Bosumi, or Bajino Kufi, Akocha. So poverty. It's in the Zongo because of honesty. They will take their time, bid their time, and make sure they ride through the process. 
Yeah. So mostly the rich are the old older folks in Zongo. So when they entry be brave, no we nini, you know, otono bo asesa. It is lately you see young people making money in Zongos, but we will talk about all of that because we are talking about Zongos. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's jump into the box, the history box, and tell our story. I was born in Tamale myself, but grew up in a shaman. A shaman is a typical Zongo. The Zongo is a shaman is fatter and bigger than the Zongo in a shaman is fatter and bigger. It's the biggest community in a shaman. You know, the biggest community in a shaman is Zongo. The biggest portion occupied by a group of people in a shaman is Zongo. So a shaman is usually tagged as a Zongo community, just like we tag Nima, you know. So I am not shy about it anytime I talk about Zongo and I say I'm a Zongo boy, probably because of former education, you know, some refined, you see, you see, and even if I tell you I'm from, you want to argue with me about all of them. But listen, Rasta, that is me. This is me, you know. As you grow, you try to, you get me. But that's where we are from, and that's where I am from too. I'm not shy about it, no at all, not at all. But I was born in Tamale, and if you go to the Zongos, you find migrants. So like I told you, I was born in Tamale, but at infant age, migration, you know, moved me. Because of migration, we moved into Ashaima. That that's how most of the Zongo that's how most of the Zongo people that's how their stories are. They will tell you from here to here. That's why the story will tell you they are migrants. Zongo settlements are areas in West African towns populated mostly by migrants from the northern savannah regions and western African Sahar Sahel. So you find people from Niger, Mali, Nigeria, you know. So to not got that messy. Wow, one man. It's a cosmo cosmopolitan area, cosmopolitan. So Ayana Suni Bayano, you know, cosmopolitan. If you have people migrating from all of these places and they come to to stay together, live together. Sometimes problematic, but sometimes very, very advantageous. So Zongo settlements are areas in West African towns populated by migrants from the northern savannah regions and the western African Sahel, especially from northern Nigeria. Common features of Zongo communities are their use of the Hausa language as their lingua franca. So you grew up in Zongo and you can't speak Hausa. Hey, you go to Nima, even ever people are speaking Hausa fluently. Go to Ashaiman Zongo, like Ashaiman Zongo, in some you find Ada, Ada people, you know, Ga people speaking Hausa fluently. So that's the lingua franca. That's our official language. Yes. Mekachi, wow, God, man. Mekachi, kola fia, mekachi. You know, that's our lingua franca. We don't run away from it. So there will be person who know no be on tell the crap and say, hey, kai, kai, make a ch-. You know, that's the lingua franca. That's the lingua franca down there. I beg your pardon, lingua franca. And the shared religion is Islam. The shared religion in our various Zongos is Islam. So it is very, very common for you to find a Christian growing up in a Zongo community. And by the time he fully grows, he becomes a Muslim. It's very, very common. Because the shared religion in Zongos, Zongos across the country, Ghana, is Islam. The designation of these words of migrants, of these words of migrants or migrants, are Zongos, in, as, as, as Zongos derives from the Hausa word Zango. Uh, the designation, the designation of these words, I mean these words of migrants, as Zongo derives from the Hausa language Zango. The term you hear Zongo, 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 it is gotten from the Hausa language and is originally Zango but corrupted into Zongo, which really means a camping place for trading caravans. A camping pra- place for trading caravans. So if you hear Zongo, it means camping place for trading caravans. As the name reveals, Zongos were originally founded as pots, pots of trade 
in the long distance trading networks that connected the West African sub region. So it was referred to, it was actually um, supposed to serve as ports. Bibi Edija. Obetano Tono Noma Kakro Ton we are no co. Next time Obano Obeta Ho Kakrano Tonoko. So structures around those areas were not meant to be permanent, they were meant to be temporary. The, the wealth accumulated are taken back to their original place of abode and then they go and build the mansions and the beautiful houses there. But in the Zongo, they kept, you know, um, structures that are supposed to be meant for temporary use. So they were referred to as pots, pots of trade in the long distance trading networks that connected the West African South region. Collectively referred to as Zongos, Zongo communities are found in all 16 regions of Ghana with much denser populations in Greater Accra and the Ashanti region. The earliest Zongo communities in Ghana started in Salaga. Salaga. That's where the earliest Zongos, the earliest Zongo communities started in Salaga, where the slave trade and then the cola trade was very much, you know. Common. And by the first quarter of the 19th century, similar communities were already established in Tamale, Yeji, and Ejisu. Ejisu in Kum around, you know, the Ashanti region. The largest and one of the oldest Zongos close to the coastal belt started in 1810. 1810 at Osha Town, known as Zongo Malam, Zongo Malam, or present day Zongo Lane. Zongo Lane. So it started as Zongo Malam and later became Zongo Lane. But it is the largest and one of the oldest Zongos close to the coastal belt in Ghana. It started in 1810, Osha Town, before they were resettled at Sabon Zongo, followed by Nima. So these are the old Zongos in Accra, the oldest Zongos in Accra, the very first, the very earliest Zongos in Accra. Sabon Zongo, followed by Nima. Sabon Zongo was born out of Zongo Lane, and Zongo Lane was born out of Zongo Malam. And if you talk of Zongos in the West, those are the very first, the earliest Zongos in the West along the coastal belt. In present day, Zongo communities in Ghana are a microcosm of people from the lower and middle classes from both northern and southern Ghana, as well as migrants from neighboring countries, including Benin, Burkina Faso, Ivory Coast, Mali, Niger, Nigeria, and Togo. Yeah, man. Diola from Mali and Hausa from northern Nigeria were the pioneer settlers of the Zongos here in Ghana. The early settle settlers contributed makeshift houses. They constructed, I beg your pardon, makeshift houses with the intention to work hard, raise some capital, and return to their locality. So those structures they erected were not supposed to be permanent structures. They were make sh make makeshift houses. Make sh That's why you walk into the Zongos. The houses are very small, cute, very small rooms, you know, and the structures are not that strong. Uh, they are meant to be temporal structures. They raise the money, work hard, and then they, uh, they migrate, they go back and make a living in their original places. But as it has usually been with migrants, I mean immigrants, Many adapted their new found place as their permanent homes and never returned. They marry, you know, indigents and decide to stay. And that's how come you had all of these zongos in town. You have second D zongo. And talking about second D zongo, a very good morning to everybody inside second D. Good morning to um, Swala. Big up man like Swala, Swala, Swala. I'm talking about Masood. Good morning, my very good brethren. He's a son of Second D Zongo. A very good morning to San Siro. San Siro is also a very good, a very, very, very true, true son of Zongo in, in, in Second D. That's the assemblyman of Assemen Sudo, right? That's the name of the place. Good morning. And good morning to every Zongo. So that's how Zongos came about. They come from all of these places, some from the northern part of Ghana. Even in the northern region, we have Zongos. We have we have Moshin Zongo in 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 Tamale, and they spoke Hausa. Moshin Zongo in Tamale spoke Hausa, 
And these are mostly people who migrated to come and stay in Tamale. So they became a Zongo. So even in the northern region, we, had, we have Zongos. You go to Salaga, we have Zongos, and they speak Hausa. And they even dominated Salaga. You go to Salaga, they speak Hausa much more than Gonja, which is the official language of the place. They speak much more Hausa. Every person in Salaga can speak Hausa because of the dominance of the Hausa people in Salaga. Salaga also has a very big Zongo community, and that is because... Zongo Singana started from Salaga. Militant people, cosmopolitan, diverse culture. Why am I talking about Zongos today? It is because I want to call the attention of the Zongo community to something very, very important. The Zongos of yesterday, they were very, very peaceful, very, very, very united. But the Zongos of today, it's a, it's a sad situation. It's a shame. No unity. No, 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 no unity at all. And the peace is not even there. Where you lack unity, you will not have peace. This is not the original Zongo. The original Zongo, very peaceful, very, very peaceful very united you can't break in there that's why they, they they live together you walk into a zongo and you don't have spaces in between the houses no walls no walls you know they are they live together and it was a strategy to stay militant and protective they protect each other so today you walk into a zongo and you see somebody building a wall around itself that's alien to zongo people it doesn't happen zongos don't do that and you don't even have a space to walk in between houses. They cluster. And it was a strategy. It was strategically done those days to stay united and protective so they can protect each other. We have a wall. I have a wall around my house. You have a wall around your house. When you scream before I break into your wall to help you, you are gone. What is happening to you might have happened to you already. But you have no wall. I have no wall. We live so close together. I hear a scream. I walk in, I fly in, and then, you know, so it was strategically done. So if you walked into Zongos and you see the houses clustered, even if you want to pass, you might be walking through somebody's room. It was strategically done, not a mistake at all. That is a structure, a structure. That is actually a strategy to keep the people together. But Zongos today, for love of power, uh, when you put the love of power over the love of the people, you have some of the problems we have in Zongos. I'm a Zongo boy, and for over 11 years, I've done this program on radio. Over 11 years, I stay out of Zongo issues. I hardly address Zongo issues unless it is connected to politics or politicians want to take Zongo people for granted. But when it has to do with their chieftaincy madness, when it has to do with their imamship confusions, I stay out of them. Because I know how volatile. But it is about time... My people rise up and wake up and realize that leadership is supposed to be in service of the people. You mash up the people to gain the leadership position. What are you going to do with it? Who are you going to serve with it? That is because today leaders think subjects to sh should serve them. They don't see themselves as servants of the subject. They see themselves as masters of the subjects and they expect the subjects to serve them. So they don't care if they mash up the people to become leaders. They don't care. They crave for power. Power. Today you hear this Zongo is fighting. The next day you hear and development does not go down into our Zongos because of this. Division among the leadership of the Zongo communities in this country. Ghana. But if the politician has realized that he cannot do without Zongo, he cannot succeed without the Zongo, why? Are you the leader in the Zongo think? How do you think you can make it without the people you actually oversee? Too much confusion. Too much confusion. Sometimes it requires the original minister to step in to solve the problems of Zongo. Those days it will not happen. You won't, you won't get a third party in a Zongo solve a situation. They have the way, they fix their own problems, they solve their own problems and they move on. Today you have pastors solving problems for Zongo people. We have politicians who are not Zongo people, who are not Muslims, solving the, actually mediating. 
it has become so porous because of division. You have a politician who doesn't pray ordering the closure of a mox. And that is because of the foolishness of the people, not because the politician does not. That's the job of the politician to ensure peace, unity. If I oversee this region as a regional minister or, 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 or an MCE, I am supposed to ensure that the place is actually calm, peaceful, for people to come, investors should come. So if you can't keep your house in order, I will step in and put it in order for you. So it has gotten to a point where people who don't worship in the mosque can actually order the shutdown of a mosque, close down the mosque because of the foolishness of a people. Let's wake up my people and go back to the old Zongos. Where Zongos dealt with their own issues, they solved their own problems, and you hardly hear of them. And when you touch them, you touch all. Today, Zongo is not like that. Very porous. The Zongos, they, 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 before they weren't in towns, you will not find them in town. And Kasekendi Zongo say, Ewe che 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 kra. The, the indigents will build to meet them. The towns grow to meet them. But they usually stayed outskirts because of their cattle. The aroma kakrano. So they love to live outskirts so they can they understand each other away from the indigents. But today we have zongos at the center, centers of cities because the cities grew to meet them. Uh, because they understood each other and they realized they could actually stay together peacefully alone than mixed up, mixed up with the people. The power you're looking for is to serve the people, so keep the people together so you can serve better. A very good morning to Sakafa. The entire Sakafa, they were nearly dragged into a mess, but they stood their grounds and stayed out of the mess. It's a Zongo youth group, very, very passionate about seeing the Zongo grow. They embark on a lot of philanthropic works. They embark on a, they embark on a lot of communal labor. You see them cleaning around masjids. I'm talking about masajids or mocks. They go to the cemetery to weed around the cemetery. They do a lot of donations to the poor and the needy in society. They actually show up to work. Use their manpower to work. When you have an, oc an occasion and you need helping hands. And that is actually the tradition of the Zungus. They love people. That's how come they married outside the Zungu. So they will tell you, Islam forbids you a man to marry a Christian, a, a, a woman, a lady to marry a Christian. But Islam does not for, forbid you a man to marry a Christian woman. So you have Muslim guys marrying outside, marrying Evers, marrying Fantis, marrying, and it's allowed. Very much allowed. It's allowed. That is how accommodating the structures are. That's how accommodating the Zongo structure, the Zongo culture, tradition is. And then we have no idea where it's coming from. Once a very peaceful people, a very united people, every day confusion lately. And it confuses the politician, even if they want to bring developmental projects or programs into the Zongos, they are scared. Wise up, my people. Reason up. Let me take all of us to the promised land. And the promised land is a state of mind. Yeah, man, the promised land is a state of mind. It is not America. It is not Sekendi Zongo, it is not Takwadi Zongo. It is not Kwekuma Zongo, it is not Kwesimintim Zongo. It is your state of mind. Clean it up. Live upright. Good morning, man, like Majid.
Good morning, Sheik. New Redeemer. Raji. <laughs> Big love man like Mashki. The man is getting married very few, very in, in a few in a few days to come. Like a week, you know, more. And the entire Sakafa, good morning. Live up to expectation when you call the Zongo person, live up to expectation. You owe your forefathers the duty, the responsibility to keep the name clean. It's not about tramadal. It's not about cocaine and crack. Today they've added alcohol to it. And the result is foolishness. We now want it clean up your state of mind. Because your state of mind is your promised land.
promised land is now Japan, your promised land is a state of mind. Oh, hey. I'm going to my promised land. Would you like to come with me? I'm going to my promised land. Yeah, oh, wouldn't you love to come with me? Melvin Brown, would you like to come with me? Yeah. I'm going to my promised land, Nicola. Would you love to come with me? Yeah. Promised land, promised land, promised land. Promised land is a state of mind. Promised land, promised land, promised land. Oh, mama, promised land is a state of mind. I said the promised land I'm talking about is not situated on earth. Yeah, promised land is a state of mind. Is a reggae republic <gasps> thing in the oil city? I mean, my cousin, me name. Me, I go bust it to the people, if you know. 